Join us as we discuss Divinity Original Sin in the next episode of the Time Hop Podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Time Hop Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Lozada. I'm joined with Tim Ronan. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Today's episode is all about Divinity Original Sin. But before we jump into Divinity Original Sin, Tim, how you doing? Pretty good. Great. Uh, I feel like I need to bring up that uh banjo banjo kazooie is now in smash or will be in smash that's right so that everything is, is right, right with the world yeah i mean it's been a while since we've last done a recording in the time hop podcast so apologies for that but yeah i am still super pumped that banjo and kazooie are going to be in smash that's just that's like a dream come true dude like it's crazy i know for so many people it's actually kind of weird at this point it's like oh that's actually it's actually a thing now yeah for so long it was like if only maybe it'll probably never happen but it's like no 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 now it's actually happened yeah it's pretty cool i'm actually pretty excited for that and it's actually been I years i think that people have been wanting oh that, yeah you know i mean i think even from yeah. since the original game on on nintendo 64 people have wanted banjo and smash so crazy oh man totally yeah and now all they need now is Keanu Reeves, right? <laughs> I you, mean, yeah. I don't know. It could. I don't know. It could happen. It could. I mean, I want to say it's unlikely, but we keep getting surprised with stuff. That's people true. are saying that. I mean, there's plenty of people who want their characters from their favorite games in here, but mm-hmm. another one that people want is. Um, uh, Steve from Minecraft. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, Banjo Kazooie's Microsoft IP, so and so is uh, Minecraft. So it's not it's not impossible. Yeah, and Minecraft, Minecraft is really popular on that platform, so it makes oh, 100% yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, I I mean, I'd obviously be excited for that. It's funny because God, if it's weird that would be <laughs> that so would amazing. be really weird. Yeah, that would be but extremely amazing. weird. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but it would be amazing if, if Sakurai and his team know how to design it. You know, I, they they've designed weirder characters. I think the Duck Hunt dog is pretty weird. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have I ever wouldn't. imagined the Duck Hunt dog being in there. You know, or yeah. Rob. Remember I, Rob? I mean, yeah, it's weird in its own way because it's like a weird. It's not even like a side character from a super old game that's never been in any other game but right Duck Hunt. Yeah. But, yeah yeah there are other really weird ones i think i can't think of them at the moment i mean like i said before rob comes to mind he it was i don't even think he was ever in a video game he was just a peripheral right right so yeah yeah i guess so yeah so you know i i I actually wrote something on Game Revolution, not to plug myself in too heavily here, but I wrote about weirdest Smash Bros. reveals and all of these insane reveal, the character reveals that are just seemingly, I still can't believe they exist, you know, like Ridley, we've demanded Ridley for her, I don't know, I think decades at this point, and now he's in, Mm. what's another one? Oh, uh, King K. Rool, you know, like all, all, I can't come, I can't think of them right now off the top of my head crom you know all, all of these characters that are just crazy that are in there now and and now we have banjo and kazooie it's just wow it, what yeah. a time to be alive what right be alive. <laughs> but what do you think do you think waluigi will make it in no i don't think so i think it's just going to be guest no? characters at this point yeah i think it's just going to be characters from other franchises like i mean non-nintendo franchises you know because we have like persona dragon quest now we have banjo kazooie 
I feel like it's going to be Minecraft and then, I don't know, something else. Something else that's weird. I feel like, well, that's that's what they want you to think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think, because, I mean, Waluigi is, like, probably... It's, like, what tons of people want, right? I mean, I guess, yeah. Is, that, I mean, is it yeah, accurate? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, at least I thought that was like one of the top demands. I, yeah. Well, if it is, I'm sure that Sakurai would know that. So, I think it will be the last character added. That would be I interesting. I mean, I feel like at this point, with getting something like Banjo Kazooie in, yeah. it's got to be a thing that'll happen. It's like, oh, there's no more characters. Sorry, guys. And then in one last fake out. Like, yeah. oh, wait, we have this guy. He goes, wah! Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no one wanted him, right? I mean, we just kind of threw him in. No one really wanted him, though, right? And everyone's like, oh, my God, we love you. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know, but don't they have him as an assist character That's my in the game? So wouldn't that be kind of weird? Because then they'd have to patch out the be assist. Because they have him as an assist trophy, right? Or an assist character, I think it's called. So wouldn't... They have to patch out his assist, and then what? What well, is exa- what exactly is an assist character? I've so so like the, this one. If you're if you're playing the stages, if you're playing the game with with items on, you could grab an icon, uh, I don't know, some kind of object, and it summons like an assist character onto the stage for a couple seconds, maybe fifteen seconds, and they do fighting for you so while i don't i forgot what waluigi does i think he maybe he smacks around like a tennis racket or something but yeah i i think i'm pretty sure that he's in the game as an assist so uh yeah yeah mm-hmm. that'd be well just because he's an assist trophy doesn't mean you can't play as him i mean, I mean that yeah i guess that'd be, that'd be that'd be the perfect reveal it's like it, they'd show like a, a clip of like characters fighting and then one of them picks up that trophy and or uh gets that assist item and instead of like a fake waluigi it's the real waluigi it's like aha huh i'm he's joining the fight or whatever other thing they decide it's like the perfect segue yeah see the future (laughs) that actually is a good cutscene because it's kind of like tug-in-cheek type of thing so you know it's kind of like it reminds me of how they how they revealed Banjo, you know, how it was the yeah, duck hunt exactly. dog, and then yeah, oh yeah, yeah okay, I, I'll bite. I'm, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm I agree sticking with, with that. this. Go ahead, I, Sakurai. To if you do do this in the future, remember us. Remember the Time Hop podcast. Remember Tim specifically. He's the yeah. one who, who yeah six twenty nine twenty nineteen, <laughs> calling it. That's right. Remember That's right. So let's move into news of the week. Before we jump back to the past, let's explore the present. Tim, what's your news story this week? Something just kind of fun. I was trying to... We've actually missed a ton of stuff, so there's like (laughs) so much that we could cover at this point. But um, I kind of found something interesting in my feed. Um, And this is kind of like... I I guess continue continue on with Nintendo... Um, so the Cadence of Hyrule game, do you know that? Yes. You're familiar with it? Yes. Yep. So it was, well, I guess that's just the full name, Cad- Cadence of Hyrule, mm-hmm. like, and then subtitle plus Crypt of the Necker Dancer or something, but it's a game developed by the people who made Crypt of the Necker Dancer, and Nintendo gave them, like, the rights to the IP to make their own sort of, um... Zelda game in the style of Crypt of the Necker Dancer. Yep. So I found this article that was talking about this interview with the, I believe, the head devs of Cuphead. And they kind of, you know, in the, from the perspective of now Kids of Hyrule being out and released and everything, they were kind of discussing how cool it would kind of be to take their own crack 
had a Zelda game, but like kind of in the style of like Cuphead. So like having things being 2D hand drawn backgrounds and enemies and everything. And they're talking about how they can like merge their style and combine that with the Zelda style. And I mean that to me that jumps out as like something like Again, just just kind of a weird thing you wouldn't expect to happen, but right. I'd be so excited for something like that. And it's and nice that you're not I mean, alone. I, don't... I mean that that it's amazing. That's an amazing idea. I I, I would love. Yeah. I mean, I love Cuphead style. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love uh, what is it? Nineteen twenties type of cartoon aesthetic that they've got there, and Link and Zelda and all of those those Hyrule characters rendered that way it would just i don't know it, it just makes a lot of sense to me just because the zelda series experiments a lot with art styles right with like wind waker yeah and twilight yeah, princess pretty, pretty right yeah. and in in you know majora's mask and all these characters and all these games so i feel like for every and and now they have crypt of the neck of the necker dancer which has its own very distinct art style you know so I just feel like it, it makes sense with with Zelda's mo. I, I don't. I think it's something that people don't necessarily associate with the franchise. But if if you really do inspect the series from its inception, it's always kind of experimented with with all of these these styles, and I, I think they've all worked to some degree. Even even you know, you know, I, I, Skyward Sword, you know, which was in the Zelda fan but fan base right now, it's kind of you know wishy-washy people love it some people hate it but even that style is just really it's very distinct it's like a very watercolor aesthetic and it's kind of like a mix between wind waker and twilight princess so yeah i i would love it and i would love for other indie developers to take on the reins of zelda what what indie developers would you like to see make a zelda game i don't know that's that's a good question I mean, it's an interesting world where you live in where you can kind of wonder and ask that now. And yeah, right. Kind of realistic. It's, ni- it's, it's nice that maybe, maybe Nintendo is being a little, like, exploratory, being more like, yeah, you know, we, uh, we like what you do. We can, can lend you our IP and make, you know, mm-hmm. see what you can make with it. I like that. Me too. I don't know. I mean... One thing that comes to mind is um, I like Enter the Gungeon. Oh, it was made by it was developed by uh, Dodge Roll. Right. Um, so I I don't know maybe something. I mean I guess that would fit maybe pretty well because it's like a, a dungeon crawler type thing. So mm-hmm. that could be interesting. What about a Metroid into the Gungeon game? I I love that. Like a sci-fi. I mean I know Into the Gungeon already incorporates some sci-fi elements right but like i i i feel like if it were completely like in, a, in an alien planet and stuff like that with randomly generated space monsters to find and stuff I, that would be awesome the the indie studio that comes to mind for me is yacht club games so shovel knight yeah because they've already have a really good relationship with nintendo they made a shovel knight amiibo I believe Shovel Knight was originally released for Wii U and 3DS, so it, it would just make. And we did it. We did an episode. Yeah, that's right on on Shovel Knight. So it, it just makes a lot of sense to me to have some kind of 2D side-scrolling game, kind of like Zelda 2. You know, I, yeah. I, and and Shovel Knight borrows from Zelda 2, so I I don't know. It it just makes oh, like maybe maybe they do a Zelda 2 remake. Oh, that's awesome. That would be cool. Or like a sequel or something. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be open to that. Oh, Nintendo man. is... I, you know, they, they experiment a lot. Sometimes it's not so great, but sometimes it's like really good. So mm-hmm. I'd, be, I'd be receptive to something like that. Yeah. When their experiments hit, they really hit, you know? And and you could really, I mean, they really, like Splatoon, you know, that's that was a, that was an experiment, and it really hit. It's it's a big big game now, right? 
for for Switch and, and it was for Wii U. But other experiments like what was it? Federation Force, Metroid Fe- Federation. Do you remember that game? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you see, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> my point exactly. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes it hits and sometimes it misses. But but when it hits, it really hits. So the new story that I picked, we're gonna go. I'm gonna go back into the pot. I'm gonna recall one of our earlier episodes. Several of our early of our earlier episodes in regards to Anthem. I know we talked about this game at at length. It's now all but gone. (laughs) I mean, the fan base is all but gone. The the game is still there, but, you know, people have moved on. And in an interview with GameDaily.biz, EA CAO Andrew Wilson, he kind of reassured that both the publisher and the developer, Bioware, they're still very committed to Anthem, despite them not adhering to the roadmap recently, et cetera, et cetera. He said things like, if he didn't, if the team didn't believe in like the javelins and the world and et cetera, et cetera, then they wouldn't be investing further and they'd be already moving on already. But he said that he still thinks that there's still a future here. Seven, I don't know. He didn't explicitly say that this game's going to last for seven to ten years but he says that ips in general they typically last nowadays for seven to ten years so um, the assumption is that they're you know ea and and bioware they're planning out a seven year cycle for anthem maybe through sequels and etc cetera, etc cetera. but do you see anthem lasting any more <laughs> tim i mean as is no <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, Me too. <laughs> I mean, I I don't really have. I mean, I I have heard that the fan base is like very much dwindling, if not like just about dead. Um, I don't know to what extent that's true, but I mean, it's it's not a secret that it hasn't hasn't done well. Right, it's had a lot of pitfalls. So if you know a, a long those lines to come out and say oh yeah yeah this <laughs> we've got another decade in us it's like boy you don't even have another month in you <laughs> what's she <you> talking about <laughs> sassy tim at it again that's right <laughs> i mean it, it's true though it's true like i think the player base is all but i i heard reports that only maybe a month or two ago that people were finding having trouble finding games so if that's the case, then why? You know, why bother investing in an IP that's dead? I mean, yeah. I, I know... I mean, it but, has to be... If yeah. an IP lasts 7 to 10 years, it has to be a good IP, man. It has to be really good, yeah. I mean, look what look what Square Enix does. Square Enix did, I should say, and they're continuing to do with Final Fantasy fourteen. That game sucked when it came out it, it was terrible like you it was an mmo but it's an mmo today still but when it launched back in i don't know maybe 2012 i think it was it it sold terribly it was it was very bad it was a very bad game but then they they kind of took it offline and then they remade it quote unquote they made it final fantasy 14 a realm reborn right and now it's a massive a massively popular game. I mean, they've had what three expansions now, and they're all re- really well received expansions. But you see what they did there. They they said, "Look, we invest a lot into this game. It's doing terribly. Let's take it off the market and let's rebuild it and then relaunch it." And now it's super massively successful. I don't understand why they're not doing this with like Anthem, and why. Or like Bethesda with Fallout 76. I mean, Fallout 76 is a different story because it's a little more. There are they are kind of fixing it gradually, but with Anthem, I mean that game was panned. It was really not well received at all, and I don't know. It it that that would be the logical thinking in my mind. I don't know about you, Tim, but and EA has the pockets. You know they they have the money for it, so. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I mean, and he's like talking about like sequels. It's like I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know either, yeah. I I mean, I I guess I would say, like, like, fix your other game first, but is it, like, too late at this point, or, like, I don't know. Yeah. That's what I think. I mean, I I think that it's just... I I love the, the lore behind it. I love the... I mean, I think we talked about this in a previous episode. Just the 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 premise of this being this world where all of these things are kind of i don't know it, it just makes it just sounded very cool i think like things from other galaxies right were being dumped into this world and it was like a melting pot of the galaxy right and it, it just sounds really cool but they didn't really bring it to life properly and if they had scrapped the current model and just replaced it i think it would be more beneficial and that way they'd have sequels down the line you know but now it's just i mean why bother just make dragon age 4 the best it could be and and stick to single player games don't touch mass effect (laughs) leave it alone (laughs) you know and just focus on dragon age because uh, i don't i don't know what else bioware would do maybe star wars another Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic game, but uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know, man. Anyway, let's move on to topic of the show. As I mentioned earlier, this week's episode is all about Divinity Original Sin, which was released for PC on June 30th, 2014. In case you don't know, Divinity Original Sin is actually the prequel to what was Divine the, Divinity? Divine Divinity. There you go. Divine oh. Divinity. That's right. Yeah. So this is actually I didn't know this, but this is actually Divinity series has actually existed for I'd say 15 years at this point now, since 2002. I I believe yeah, I, I believe it has and and Larian Studios has been the developer all along. They're now going to helm Baldur's Gate 3, which is extremely exciting because the Divinity series takes extreme homage to Baldur's Gate, so it, it just makes a lot of sense. As you probably surmised from my comments just now, Divinity Original Sin is an isometric role-playing game, turn-based isometric role-playing game that is very much like the RPG games of years ago, and it has both single-player and multiplayer components, and that's really cool, but one of the best parts about the game is how at least what critics say is how it kind of excuse some video game conventions let's say in turn in favor of fleshing out some the world so for an example when you go into somebody's house there are consequences to that when you pick up an item off of somebody's desk there are consequences to that and it it feels very real in that sense it's very meticulous and some that might put off a lot of people but people who love rpgs and who love nitty-gritty of the genre they they might actually like this game so before i go on about doing original sin tim what do you think of the game's presentation Uh, this is it's a real it's a big game yeah i've actually i've played 118 hours of it Holy and <laughs> granted actually I actually I tried to play it to prepare for this podcast but mm-hmm. um, my computer kept overheating <laughs> oh. it's uh, so yeah I was able to play it like I don't know a few years ago but my poor old laptop is I don't know it's older so maybe it can't handle it so it's actually, it's actually been a little while since I've like played all those hours, and I think mm-hmm. that was across. I, I did a lot with a friend of mine. We did some multiplayer, and I think I also did some single player stuff. But it's it's such a freaking massive game. I haven't beaten it yet. But point I'm getting to is that there's like a ton of like different areas you can see. There's like um, I think undead crypts and dungeons, and there's a hub town and like an icy snowy place and forest there, there's a lot of variety to see in terms of like the places you go and the kind of things you'll see so that's that's really nice in terms of like quality i'd say it's pretty decent all around 
I mean, maybe not like cutting edge, like whatever, but it still looks still looks nice to look at. And things like spell attacks and the different enemies you come across, there's variety there, and I think it's also very well done. And overall, just pretty, I'd, I'd say it's pretty pleasing and nice to look at. A lot of mm-hmm. little details, shops and people and buildings, and actually to the point where it can be hard to like spot certain items on the ground or whatever. Right. But uh, there, there you actually can, there's a, you can press alt or whatever, whatever you have it bound to. And it'll, if there's an item you can pick up, it'll tell you like, Oh, Hey, there's a thing here. And that's very welcome. Cause ah. some of the environments can be like, like detailed or like there's like bushes or whatever in the way. So if there's something to pick up, you could easily miss it if it wasn't for that. So, right. That's that's something that I haven't played this game, but I I seen playthroughs, I've you know, reviews and et cetera, et cetera, in order to prepare for this show. That was something that I I was wondering about because I looked through, you know, I, I was I saw the the inventory system and it looks really, really dense, and that is cool, but at the same time it's very off putting to someone like me who very much prefers just very you know streamlined i <laughs> you know i go through an inventory series uh system and i see what i want and i you know i, I don't really like menus when i'm playing games so mm-hmm. i feel like that aspect of the presentation is a little off-putting to me i think i was actually gonna get into it later but yeah um the, the, there are like a couple different menus and stuff Probably not as bad as like something like WoW or whatever, but I, I can definitely see that. And yeah, it was. I'll probably maybe bring it up later, but mm-hmm. yeah, the inventory there's, like you can there's a lot of items you can pick up, a lot of stuff you'll be finding, so your inventory will fill up with like all sorts of garbage. Right. It's just like oh my god, I have to I have to go through all this. <laughs> yeah, that I mean I I consider that a presentational aspect just because. I look at it for... I mean, yeah. it is a gameplay aspect, too, because a lot of the game is kind of like... It, it reminds me of the Atelier games. You, you, I don't know. Do you Are you familiar with the Atelier games? Uh, I don't I don't think so, actually. They're, no. they're, really, they're really Japanese games. And it, it reminds me of that series because it's all about alchemy. So you're kind of putting items together and you're fermenting these new you know potions etc etc and it reminds me of that because it's it's very much about item management right it's like an item management game so i don't like that (laughs) and that's you know something that i personally am not very enthusiastic about but that being said i do see why people can love that just because it feels very immersive and you know to to get into the overworld aspect not to put the to put the menus aside the detail the environments do look detailed enough where it does contribute to the sense of wow you really are in this fantasy world you really are contributing to these people and uh, i really like the voice acting i don't know if it's in the original during original sin pc but i do know that they flush it out in the enhanced edition which came out for xbox one and ps4 a year later and i do like how the voice actors there they sound very uh medieval <laughs> and stuff so i like that aspect i don't know the the game it, it isn't mind-blowing the visuals like especially when you're during during combat it didn't look like it was a revelation to me but it, it did seem like it was good enough where it it, it got the message across fine you know like it, it wasn't it it wasn't terrible. It wasn't like PS2 graphics, but it wasn't PS5 graphics and either. So somewhere in between, where maybe in PS, somewhere in between PS3, PS4. Yeah, I I I thought it was fine, and, and I don't think people who play this game are gonna really mind. Mm-hmm. So moving on to gameplay, Tim, how do you think of the gameplay? What do you think of the gameplay? Well, like I said, there is a lot there's a lot of content i i've as i mentioned i played almost 120 hours and even still i i I actually i don't even know how close i am to the end of the game at this point but oh my god i mean like i i I think at one point it seemed like oh yeah like 
like I was playing with a friend and a friend and we're like pretty close, I think. But, you know, I look at the map and it's like, I, it's like, wait, is the map, is the map only like half full? But aren't we like almost done? But oh then it was God. like, no, no, there's like, there's more. And it's like, oh, I, how, how much of this game is there? <laughs> but I, yeah, so I, I actually have no idea how close I am at this point, but there's just, there's tons of like quests and side quests and people to talk to and places and secrets and enemies to fight and right not to mention like level ups and skills to get and magic to learn and Mm -hmm. there's so much you can do i I was going to mention that like the skills and the magics and and the skills and the magics the skills and the spells that you can kind of you can you can tailor each character right through to yeah so kind of experimenting with your character with your party and you know making one a cleric one making one the attack based leader that it, it, i think that there's a degree of experimentation involved there and it's it's some trial and error i correct me if i'm wrong but I, yeah i mean it, it is a game where you're going to be sinking a lot of time into it it's some, not a game for me you know like i cannot imagine me playing yeah. another 120 hour game for the rest of my lifetime (laughs) or for for the rest of my of the foreseeable future at least yeah so definitely it can be an acquired taste yeah because it's going to take it takes some investment multiple Mm -hmm. sessions uh Mm -hmm. especially if you're like you know playing with someone else take a while to get through all that right but um i do like how i mean you yeah you like you do have skills and you know, traits and stuff, but I like how sometimes you can have interactions between your different characters ah, over certain situations. That's right. And depending on how, I mean, it kind of works, I guess it kind of works better if you're playing with someone else cause, because they, um, you each have control of someone. So you can have like a discussion with your friend over a certain situation. And depending on how each of you answer and talk with each other, you kind of get like different personality stats. So in the first like two minutes or so of the game, you find this guy that's like, you find a book on this corpse and it's on this guy who jumped from the cliff above because he thought he could fly. And then your characters have a discussion about that. And what you can answer, like one of them can be like, oh, well, that seems silly. And then the other one's like, well, you know, sometimes you got to take leaps of faith. And if you, if you answer, like, if you say that it seems silly of him to do that, then you get like plus one to pragmatic, like your trait, pragmatic personality Uh trait or whatever. Yeah. But if you're like, oh no, you know, you gotta, you gotta reach for your dreams sometimes or whatever, you get like (laughs) plus one, (laughs) you get plus one to romantic. And that helps you with like that gives you like a boost to crafting, whereas the pragmatic one. Uh, wait, no, that's backwards. The romantic one gives you uh, plus one to lucky charm, which helps you find like extra loot and treasures and stuff. Whereas pragmatic gives you a boost to crafting, and like the quality of stuff you can make and the, your like crafting speed. So it's kind of cool how you can come across stuff like that, and I don't know, you can role play a bit, right? And answer a certain way and get little stat boosts ah i see so so it's kind of like playing dungeons and dragons in a way if you're playing with another person yeah i mean that's i'd say it's absolutely correct yeah hmm that's an interesting perspective i I didn't think about that because i i always thought about it from a single player perspective you know but having that that cooperative element it it probably is very immersive i I don't know what's i don't know the the right word to news here very interactive for sure and yeah that would be that would be very cool to have a friend with you for like an an entire 120 hours playing this game you know Mm -hmm. you'd you'd be like soulmates forever after after (laughs) (laughs) so the person that you were playing with you played with them the entire time or the entire 100 yeah wow oh my god wow that's 
that's a lot of time. <laughs> I I can't that's imagine. A lot of time. But you could but you could drop out, right? So you could play the game solo, say if your partner isn't there, if I recall. Yeah, you yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. And um, Interesting. They can, I think they can just like like drop in as well. Right. Drop in, drop um, out, co-op. Yeah. Hmm. I, I think to a degree you can do that, maybe. To a degree, okay. Yeah, but but uh, so one of the things I I was mentioning the inventory before, which I'll right go over again. But um, so along the lines of being a big world, and being there being tons of places and things to find, there's a lot of loot and gear and random junk you'll find as well. Uh, and if you're someone like me, who likes picking everything up at least the important stuff. I don't, I don't, I'm not the person who's like in Skyrim picking up like bowls and <laughs> spoons. I'm not, I'm not that much of a pack rat, but right. I like holding on to like, you know, axes and bows and that kind of stuff. But even that, there's a lot of that kind of stuff and your inventory is going to fill up at some point with like just rows and rows and rows and rows of all this stuff. So, You'll likely be doing a lot of inventory management and mm -hmm. sorting through things, and like comparing the little stat changes between your weapons. Like, oh, this one has plus one to that, plus two to that. Oh, but it doesn't have this thing, and it's like minus one to that. And um, you know that can that can be time consuming. And for me, I I can I usually spend my time with it to the point where like my friend and I would go back to the hub area, and I could easily spend like twenty thirty plus minutes just going through all the stuff and like selling it off getting gold for it oh my god um and he would have to wait around and probably got impatient with me but i get i, I just i hate letting go stuff if i think i will regret it or can't get it back uh -huh. <clears throat> i can't get it back later so i'm like trying to deliberate over these stupid like little points of like minus one plus one to everything and trying to make sure i don't do something wrong wow so i just there's so it, it could just be a lot and it, i could definitely see it being overwhelming to certain people and just there's yeah. a lot to have to take care of and that's very daunting that. i mean <laughs> to me personally that's very daunting like i, I would not i i'm one of you i'm i'm just like you in the sense that i like to hold on to everything too at least the the important stuff a lot of games now they're pseudo rpgs right so like even horizon zero dawn is something that you know you you have to you have items that you have to manage and you know even in that game i don't want to let go of my dinky bow and bow because e even if i have like the super overpower overpowered one because I don't know when I'm going to... I don't know. I, I feel... I, it just doesn't feel right to me. So I definitely understand that perspective. And I feel like in a game like this, I'd be just like you, if not even more heavily... In, like, I, I would waste a lot of time at merchants just, like, deciding what to sell, deciding, you know, what to what to scrap and what, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know, like... As someone now with you know with a wife and 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 with a full time job and you know other things to do, I d <laughs> I don't I don't know if I if I want to jump into that. You know, I, it just sounds so unappealing. But again, this isn't about me or or you necessarily, Tim. It's about the wider audience as a whole. And again, this is something that people would. It, deep really hardcore rpg fans that they would sink a lot of time into if they're really into it so what do you think of the game's sound the sound design pretty awesome i took a look at um i, I feel like I, I wonder if i haven't really because i played i've obviously played this game for a while but i feel like there are a lot of moments where i was like wait i don't really remember hearing that music before mm -hmm. maybe, maybe sometimes i turn the like i don't know the music down like the sliders on a game or whatever, or I don't know, maybe I was busy like fighting and stuff to like really hear some of the tracks, but they're, they're actually really good. And there's ones that are like sort of more chill and like jiving 
There's ones that are like set behind like epic big, big encounters. Mm. Some are more like somber and reflective. In particular, I think my favorite one is actually just main battle music. It's so good. And I, again, I just, I don't really remember hearing it before. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know, I, ha- I had headphones on when I was listening. So maybe I, because usually I don't, I don't think I was wearing headphones when I would play this. So I just, I just didn't catch on to it. But it's so good. It has like this kind of high energy to it. And it's got like a mix of, it's like imminent danger, but it's also like kind of just fun and energetic as well. And it's just, it's just so good. Hmm. So the thing is, is I can't recall it either. And I just, I just, you know, finished, you know, researching this game and I, I, I've already kind of forgotten about it. Uh, I I don't really think anything's. I, I'm I I'd have to be on the opposite side because I don't really remember anything. I mean, I remember the voice acting, as I mentioned before, and I thought that was pretty impressive. But maybe maybe the playthroughs I was looking at, they it was muted. I, I don't know, but I, I don't I can't recall like the, anything that stood out to me. So I can't really say much in this in this department, but I can say that the voice acting is pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I like to. Well, usually with these, I like to just like look up the OST uh, original right. soundtrack on YouTube and just kind of isolate it because sometimes it can be overshadowed by what's going on on the screen. Yeah, that that but happens also, to me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But I also like to I like to do both. So I like isolating it, but I also like pairing it with the actual gameplay because I mean that's that's what it's meant to be played behind and right. paired with. Right. So it's good to at, at least for me I like getting to appreciate it like on its own for what it is and actually be able to hear it and then kind of seeing how that meshes with what it's meant to be put mm-hmm. with. But yeah, no, I I I, I totally understand that because it, it is very easy to especially if you're playing the game itself it is very easy to kind of ignore the music and get very lost in the gameplay in the menus and the whatever because you're not yeah you're just not paying attention to it and and your mind is focused on something else so i guess that's what happened to me i just i i just i'm not going to call it unmemorable the soundtrack but i will say that i can't remember <laughs> i can't remember anything about it so uh yeah. and, and i just i just stopped researching it what like maybe an hour ago i just finished researching maybe an hour ago so i don't know mm-hmm. but uh yeah take that take that for what it is so what is your overall opinion of divinity original sin is it worth playing today i would say absolutely i mean really this i i kind of wouldn't mind playing it again um mm-hmm. i'd probably do it with i mean i i'd probably be happy playing it by myself but it, it was I, i'm remembering how fun it was to play it with someone and you can it's 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 a pretty good investment like if you if you enjoy longer form sort of games or at least you have the, the patience to like go through the motions of a longer sort of game i feel like it's a really good investment and it can it can last you a while with whoever you're playing with mm-hmm. um i know that you know sometimes um you know, people I play with sometimes we struggle with what we're gonna decide to play. So it's kind of like, oh, we'll just do this one because we still haven't. There's still a lot left to it, and there's just a lot to do. And I mean, when you're done, I mean, I don't know. Maybe some people even play it again because you can like play different classes and experiment with different stuff and try different tactics and do different things. So wow, I would <laughs> I would definitely recommend this if you're into that type of thing. If you're into it's kind of more hardcore RPGs and that there's like more stats and there's different things in that way you can put skills into and make a more custom sort of build tons of quests to do tons of loot you'll find you know lots of story elements and that type of thing if you're into that i would definitely recommend it yeah i i agree with you i mean you've you've kind of hit the nail on the head i agree that if you're into this this but this is Okay, this is a game that's very much an RPG, very much 
a product of its own genre. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't really rely on other influences outside the genre to kind of get to, at least from my experience, to kind of, you know, move the story along. There is, there are some some highs and lows, of course, of the narrative, and, and maybe you could attest that to, you know, action-adventure games. But this is very much, I feel, a game that takes from old school RPGs and, and tries to kind of reinvent it in the way that you do have these quests that, that are very intricate and and thought provoking and there are some character interactions where you could really kind of flesh out relationships with your party members things like that so I would recommend it to people who are I, I recommend it to, actually to old school RPG fans fans of turn-based combat who, who can't get enough of it and who think that there aren't enough games out there that that utilizes this, this mechanic it's definitely something for for them but people who are curious about this game who aren't really well versed in isometric rpgs i don't know i mean i it, it's worth maybe looking into i don't know if there's a demo on this on consoles or or on pc but Maybe if you have the opportunity to try out to try it out for an hour and two and see how much you get out of it, I I definitely you know give it a shot. But I I'd stay away from it. I mean, like me personally, I have no incentive to play this game just because I don't have the time and I I'm for many many reasons. I'm not a fan of the genre. I, I'm I mean of of traditional isometric rpgs i do not have the time <laughs> and I'm, I'm just not really that much of a fan of the setting either the fantasy fantastical elements to it so you know it, it's not a game for me but if you are in complete disagreement to me if you're on the opposite end of the spectrum which i'm sure tim is this is something totally up your alley you know set aside <laughs> 200 hours <laughs> No, I'm joking, but it's something worth looking into, I, I, I'm, I'm sure. So that about wraps it up for our impressions of Divinity Original Sin. Thank you for joining us. Next week, we won't have a podcast because me and Tim are actually going to be working on another project together. We will announce that very soon. But until then, just stay tuned to King Gamer and we will keep you updated. Okay, Tim, so what are you going to be playing next week? You know, I've actually been, I think like the past week or so, I've actually been going back to a, a favorite of mine, uh, mm. not Minecraft. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's a given, I guess, at this point. But I actually, back in the day, really enjoyed um, Call of Duty of Zombies. So I've been oh. dipping into that for the past week or so That's and interesting. i don't know I'll, I'll probably be doing more of that as i go on but hmm. yeah I, I play i played a lot of that so like, which which game specifically day. is it it's uh black ops one oh wow yeah i played that too that's yeah. very cool that's the one with that was the very first one. I th- no, no, no. It was World at World at War, right? Was the first one with the zombies? Yeah, that that was yeah, that was the first one. I actually didn't know that at first. I thought it was, I guess I thought it would, like originated in Black Ops One, but yeah, World at War was where it originally um, yeah. was featured. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing that online too. It was it's super. It gets really hard once you start getting to like what round twenty, right? Yeah. Somewhere I remember there. back when I first started playing it, like I get to round like five and just die. Oh no! It just it just kind of it kind of ramps up. Yeah, I um, mean you like yeah. sometimes you, it's it's really up to like the luck of the draw. I feel like because I'm not a great COD player at all, but sometimes I'd be with a party that was really good. And they'd have like all the like I, I jump into a party, 
and they've been like round 17 or something and they're already kind of like they have all the the good guns unlocked and stuff like that i think there's like a laser gun right there's yeah there's the the monkey bomb monkey bombs right yep. and they they have all of these these things already kind of the 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 sheds what is it the the, the gun boxes I don't, I don't know i don't know i forgot what they're called but they have yeah. the gun boxes already kind of uh, unlocked so you just go to them and and you'd pick out whatever at random and it, you know it, the it would, mystery box mystery boxes there you go man i forgot the name yeah you just go to the mystery <laughs> boxes and and you you i was it was really fun man it was really i i think the most i made it was like oh man we made it really far once like around upper 20s almost 30 so yeah yeah I, I recently made it, fun. like in the past week, I made it to like 30, 32 or something. Wow. But Man. Some, I think some people have like gotten to, well, certainly like 115. Oh. And even like higher than that. How? That, that, must, t- like, that must take time. Because uh, the one thing, I mean, I really enjoyed the game mode. Mm-hmm. But it, at some point it does get like, repetitive very monotonous yeah and yeah there's just like a routine of like okay I'm gonna kite the zombies around in a circle get them into a huge crowd and then shoot at them right and then wait for more to appear and just do that over and over but they get like tougher and tougher and harder to kill yeah um so it gets to a point where like you can just like you can get like a maximum upgraded weapon and then just lose all that ammo for it just trying to kill things and then you have to go get another weapon so it gets like yeah tricky and repetitive and just long so yeah i I would imagine you just you know like the cycle would be round starts right you have a really good weapon and you unleash it against this horde and then you go back to the mystery box you get another thing you're really lucky you get another good weapon you kind of you, you know you unleash it again against the horde it's run out you go back to another mystery box you get another weapon and then you repeat and you just keep repeating over and over again right that sounds boring yeah, i much. mean i mean like i i remember like the sessions that i did i thought this must have been what eight years ago now the the sessions that i was a part of they were they last a long time you know so i if you're up to like a hundred something, how would you even? I mean, how much time would that be? That sounds like I, I don't know. That sounds like days. I, mean, to I, me. I there's obviously like some like. I mean, at this point, there's like strategies out there and stuff, and right. I know it, at least in the past there have been like some exploits where you can like get up to a place where zombies can't hit you and just shoot at them. Ah, uh, um, I think they've either mostly or completely patch those kind of things out but yeah i don't know it would take i think it would take a long time to get to that point so yeah i don't know i i you know i i kudos to whomever puts in the time and effort to doing that because that's very impressive but i (laughs) do not have the skill or the patience to to do that so you know like oh i want to I was trying to remember. I could have sworn that someone got to like round a thousand. What? Um, I was wrong. Someone, at least from this YouTube video that I haven't watched, but the title says round 1337. 1337. How? I, do, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know how you would do that. How is that even possible? How do you, how do you even, how do you, like, aren't you supposed to sleep and pee? How do you even like like how would you well, function? You just get a big like I don't know tub of cheese balls, get a couple water bottles, uh, Man. maybe some caffeine, five hour energies, you're set. Man, no man, I I no I have. <laughs> No man, I'll just leave it at that. Just no, <laughs> that's that's crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> 
No time for big RPGs. No time for no time for Nazi oh, zombies. Yeah. No, <laughs> I have no time for anything. Uh, as far as games are concerned, it's a good segue. Uh, I probably won't be playing anything this week because I do not have time to play anything this week because I'm going to go on vacation. But I will be trying to watch a movie. I'm going to try to watch Toy Story Four. I hear it's good. So nice. Did you see Toy Story Four? I have not seen Toy Story Four, but I would like to see it at some point. Yeah. Did you see Detective Pikachu? I haven't. No, I haven't seen that either. Man, we're really missing out on movies, Tim. We gotta get back on the ball here. Scrub. (laughs) We're both scrubs. Yeah. I might I might actually watch Tick to Pikachu first because I, I missed out on it. And I, I feel like it's a it's something that like a mandatory watch for Pokemon fans everywhere. Right? We're po- we're like super hardcore Pokemon fans, so we've gotta watch it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that about wraps it up for this episode of the Time Hop Podcast. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm your host again, Dave Lozada. You can find me on Twitter at Xenocreator125. Tim is here. You can find him on King Gamer, writing articles as usual. This is the last episode of the Time Hop Podcast for the time being. Tune in later in July, and you'll find out what we'll be working on then. So, see you in July. Until then, have a good summer. Enjoy your 4th of July. Enjoy the fireworks and eat a lot of hot dogs and American stuff. Bye. Bye.